Stanna här några minuter till. Kommer regnet så byter vi helt enkelt plats och går vi in. The most basic definition of peace is that there is no war going on and no organized mass killings of, of other kinds. But often we want to think about levels of peace or the quality of peace. Because if we just focus on is there a war going on or not, then North Korea and Norway would both be equally peaceful. A few years ago, when I met Professor Erik Melander from Uppsala University, and I heard that uh, the planet is beginning to get calmer and more peaceful. And uh, I got all the reasons why and all the data behind it. And we decided a group of friends to do a peace festival with to mix musicians and, and academic people and also people from the business area to spread this all over the world. So now we have had several um, festivals all over the world. 
Later on this evening, we're going to have one in Portugal. And now we are one hour late, exactly, uh, due to a Swedish hailstorm. So let the show begin. Yes. Thank you. Modern history, probably, was a few years ago. And then, like when? Like uh, ten years ago. Ten years. Yeah, and then something happened. Syria. Of course, Syria and the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan got worse again. So there are ups and downs. So now the levels of violence are going down again. For several years, they are going down. But the important point to realize here is that this latest peak in 2014, involving Syria and Iraq and so on, was lower than all the previous peaks. Emma and uh, and Matthias has an, uh, are participating in an organization called Olderpoi Sweden. Yeah, it, it's actually a, a, a Olderpoi uh, is a Maasai word uh, from the Maasai tribe in Kenya. They have a, a school for poor Maasai children that are free. Now we know exa exactly like all the money is actually going to the school fees. So yes. That's great. traditional way into politics today when you're about uh, 13, 15, something like that, you get into the youth party and you, that works for some people. It's about 5% of young people today who organize in this way, but there's so many more yeah. <laughs> uh, sort of perspectives and knowledge and that needs to get into politics that sort of are losing out today. Uh, do, do. Yes, we have uh, created a concept that we call the Good Village. And actually that is a way to create uh, welfare societies in micro formats in countries that does not have a tax-financed welfare. Mm -hmm. And what we... Uh, what well, the word welfare that we use, it's the basic human rights, actually. Uh, in Sweden we take it for granted that we all have it, mm -hmm. but we know that there's a lot of countries out there uh, where there's a lot of things to be done. Mm -hmm. And what, what country are we talking about? Uh, yes, it's uh, in Burkina Faso in West Africa, one of the poorest countries in the world, landlocked in the southern Sahara. And how come you're, uh, y you know about this country? More than me, <laughs> I wonder. Uh, yes, I, I uh, grew up there. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, so I, I look like Swedish, but uh, <laughs> I do have Africa. Those okay. African countries, everybody, even though they live in the capital or somewhere, uh, they have a home village. And the home village is where your parents or grandparents or ancestors are from. Mm -hmm. So even I, of course, I have my, my home village. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, Seventy percent uh, is an alphabet. Uh, so we have a, it's it's hard to have a democracy in a country where people cannot read and write. So everything was made from the beginning. Um, so they started the preschool. Everything went perfectly well. Uh, after two years, they started school. Our kids were best in class. We were like, Dick, this is going well. Everybody was happy, and we kept on developing this school. And a little. Little questions came up, like, okay, we have to have water, we have to feed them because they don't eat home, and so on. Um, but then the same women came back, and they said, well, yeah, our kids are doing fine at school, they make it, but as long as they were at the preschool, we saw how they developed. Every day they came home, and they were proud, they were happy, they told us about things we didn't know. Um, but when they started school, that stopped. They don't even want to go there. So we know that the school it's not adapted to our intelligent children. So we want to school with the same system, school system, as we had at the preschool, so that our children can continue to grow. People in Sweden would tell us, well, you did so well with that preschool. Why don't you stick to preschool? You can just build other preschools. We're like, yeah, in Sweden we could do that, because all the other parts of the universe package, the welfare system is already there. So I can develop the perfect preschools. But in a country like Burkina Faso, there's no little next added thing that will be fine afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if we have a preschool, we have to have a school. Then we have to have a vocational school. Then you have to have lifelong learning. You have to have the library. You have to have the Wi-Fi. You have to have the clean water. You have to have food security. You have to have the infrastructure. You have to have entrepreneurship, etc., etc. So we, you, or what's changed in your life working with this? So hands-on. Yeah. Uh, so if I look back two years uh, to where I was then, uh, one of the most obvious things I think uh, that has changed like in the way I think is just uh, I don't put as much weight into ideology. So in, in politics like we, we like to uh, square everything off and, and have everything, everything neatly slotted into left or right or whatever. But now, like, whether you're right-leaning or left-leaning, we all have to live with one another, so uh, I think I don't put as much weight into ideology. I try to like, focus on the individual instead. Now, could you tell us about what Scandinavians for Life is? It's a non-profit organization, a small one, but a great vision. Clear and safe drinking water for all human beings. Hmm. We can't solve that ourselves, but we can do a little part. Hmm. Local exo piece. <laughs> yeah, really. And what, what does not clean water, I mean, if I drink not clean water, I know I feel, I feel bad that day. But what, what in the big perspective? Uh, you know, we started here two hours ago. Yeah. In that time, uh, 60 children have died as an effect of waterborne diseases. So every other minute? Every other minute a child dies in the sick. And then we provide them with a live straw. You know, they can put this like a straw with three levels of filters, active coal and others, and if you put that in the contaminated water and, and use it like this, it's clean when you get, get to the mouth. Hmm. This, this one helps a child one year for 15 euros. 15 euros? 15 euros. 15, you 150, this bell? 
invite someone else up. Yeah, we are two people here from Scandinavian Flies. My son, Magnus Pedersen, please. He's also the, one of the technical heroes here tonight. <laughs> you know, when the, when the thunderstorms hit us and we moved from outside to inside, he fixed that. Yeah, I know. Yes, it was. Actually, I went to Nairobi to perform on a club there. Sing the gamla på komposten Låt det multna har vi gjort igen Sing the gamla på komposten Sink livet tänka på blåna sen Alla skotten Alla skotten Natten som bär mig ner Denna oro Dessa tvivl som aldrig lämnar mig i fred Släng den gamla på komposten Och låt den multna har vi gjort igen Släng den gamla på komposten Thinking about uh, when there is this all this misery in the world and the people that um, try to uh, still survive and still keep their dignity in life doesn't matter how your life situation looks like but uh, it's important to keep your dignity in life Life is hard. 
don't want to fight I got no food Live in the street Nothing to eat Can you come for me? Can survive when you move off the door. I never want to keep my dignity. So dignity, I can't you see? There's no humanity You miss my family You can't you see I wanna go home With this misery Thank you so much, Luis. Uh, now it's time to welcome uh, Ronny Åstra. Det er enkelt å 
Busting flat on my roof, waiting for a train, feeling nearly as faded as my dreams. Bobby thumb the diesel down just before it rained, and it took us all the way to New Orleans. Well, I pull my harpoon out on my dirty red bandana, playing soft while Bobby sang the blues. The wind chill on the slipping time I was holding Bobby's hand in mine We sang every song the driver knew
Klaus and Eva, because this is a wrap. This is the end of the evening. who've invited us to this beautiful house for the fifth time. Incredible. And uh, I'd like to thank all the speakers from different organizations and all the fantastic musicians. And please visit our website to have a look for more information and to have a look at some of the films that we haven't been able to show you tonight due to technical issues. <laughs> so now, please wrap it up. Okay, thank you. Uh, I also like to thank everyone who's here and everyone out there watching us. And, uh, this was a very special evening. It didn't come out exactly as we thought it would, uh, but it's the first time I've seen about over 100 people doing something at the same time, carrying things in when the storm came. So thank you very much for that. And uh, we finally came through with this. So. Now we're, we're just um, we're grateful to be able to do this for the fifth time, and we're so happy for the people who contacted us to also see how they can participate and share. And due to the technical pro problems, we will not be able to share the greetings we have from all over the world. So we will post that on our website, so you can find them there afterwards. So we will just wave to you guys. We will post you on the website. All right.